Hi Lana, uh, welcome once again to Learner's Coach. So today we are going to look at how two processes communicate in what we refer to as inter-process communication. So this communication happens synchronous and asynchronous. So we are going to understand what do we mean by synchronous and synchronous communication in distributed uh, systems, right? So we are going to look at two processes or we are going to assume that you have two processes communicating to each other. As you are aware, inter-process communication within any distributed system happens by sharing of messages yeah, from one uh, process uh, to the other, right? So it can either happen synchronously or asynchronously. So the concept of synchronous uh, communication is where the process or the two processes both can be able to send and receive in blocking operations. So that means a particular process can allow the other process to either receive and the other process can allow the other process uh, to send, right? So the other thing that you need to know is this particular uh, asynchronous communication whereby the use of the send operation is non-blocking and the receive operation can have either blocking and non-blocking uh, variants. We take a look at two examples of protocols that use synchronous and asynchronous communication. Uh, a good example of, uh, of a protocol that uses synchronous uh, way of communicating is the transmission control protocol, right? The TCP. And asynchronous is the one we refer to as the user datagram protocol. So we're going to understand how this operation occurs, right? So we have agreed that two processes communicate by send a passing of message, messages. So this particular passing of messages could be blo either blocking or non-blocking. So what is really blocking in synchronous? Yeah. So the ability of a particular process yeah, to block a particular uh, blocked a particular sending of message before it is received is what we refer to as a blocking send. And of course you have blocking receive. Uh, that means that the receiver block this particular uh, communication channel until the message is fully available. So these are two concepts that you need to understand. Yeah, Blocking send, you block, the process blocks uh, the sending process until the message is received, right? And the blocking receive, the receiving process actually blocks the communication channel until the entire uh, message is received. Uh, also we have non-blocking. Non-blocking is actually to allow free flow of information. So non-blocking is normally uh, considered when asynchronous communication is taking place. They we have non-blocking during the transmission of the message, yeah, and of course we have the non-blocking during uh, receive receiving of this particular uh, message. So a particular process can either uh, decide to block this particular uh, message, or it can also decide to non-block. So these are two parameters that is normally used when to distributed or when communication is happening within a particular distributed uh, system. So it's not really natural that for a sender is just to block, right? So it can send several messages to multiple uh, destinations, right? But also the sender usually expect acknowledgements of message. So during synchronization, we actually borrow the concept of windowing where you the sender has to send some uh, alert message to the receiver that it is sending a particular message then the receiver upon receiving the entire message it sends acknowledgement that it has received that particular message uh, properly in case there is a failure or in case the message was not properly uh, sent it can always uh, issue an alert that the message was not received uh, properly so these are some way uh, to understand how the various uh, processes communicate within a distributed system. 
We also have other possibilities apart from just uh, uh, blocking and, uh, and unblocking. Yeah? So we can have a possibility where both processes block the message as, until it is received. Yeah? So this always normally occurs when communication link is unbuffered. For instance, there is no message queue. Right? Now, we also have other combinations. We have already looked at blocking send that happens within synchronous communication and blocking receive. We also have non blocking send and non blocking receive. Now, these are not a typical way uh, that, that processes communicate within a distributed system. But we have the typical way, right, or the most preferred way of communication, and that is the non blocking send and blocking receive. Yeah. For instance, a server. Uh, a server process that provides services and resources to other uh, processes. It will need the expected information before uh, proceeding. So that means if a particular process within a server actually wants to do it, uh, to send that particular uh, message, it will it will allow it will allow the server to receive other additional requests. Yeah, but also allow the server to deal with one particular request through a blocking mechanism. So we have uh, the event synchronization. Before these two uh, processes uh, communicate or share the message, they need to uh, synchronize the operations. In that one side sends, then the other receives until all data has been sent and uh, received. And this is typical of a TCP, transmission control a protocol it normally has provide this particular event uh, synchronization before the communication uh, happens so when we talk about uh, synchronization and synchronization we need to talk to look at synchronization as a mechanism where communication channel is blocked right and the trans uh, before this particular message has been transmitted and vice versa so Alternatively, the interprocess communication operations may occur uh, through asynchronous, that what we refer to as an unblocking. So an asynchronous operation is issued by a process will not block further processes, uh, right? The processes will be considered uh, free to proceed with this processing. So this is just what we have already mentioned, that asynchronous communication offers the non-blocking option. Non-blocking meaning that it allows it allows the sending a process to keep on sending right then also it also allows the receiving process to keep on receiving that is non-blocking 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 within the receiver side non-blocking within the uh, sender side we also have the option where we have non-blocking and blocking let's see at this uh, let's look at this uh, particular a diagram where we have synchronous send and receive so the first diagram as you can see we have a key denoting the red uh, cycle or the point as an operation and of course we have the continuous arrow uh, showing execution flow then we also have the dotted line that means there's uh, some kind of suspension right so let's understand how synchronous send and receive works. Now we have two uh, processes here. Processor 1 running on host 1 and processor 2, uh, process 2 running on a uh, host 2. So when process 1 is sending a message, you can see it, it actually executes, it executes the non-blocking. Yeah? No, it executes the blocking procedure. Blocking is seen by the continuous line right then it blocks until the processor or the process to communicates or offers acknowledge yeah is when it resumes some kind of uh, blocking procedure right then on the at the second process you can see there is a, a little bit of blocking that happens then it suspends the blocking and then it allows the server to receive that particular uh, message in as uh, a blocking blocking mechanism so this is where we have the operation of synchronous communication happening between two 
uh, processes. So there's a blocking during the send and also there's blocking uh, during receive. So let's look at the second option where we have asynchronous during send and synchronous during receive. In other words, we have non-blocking uh, during send and we have blocking uh, during receive. So that's those are the two uh, mechanisms that the two uh, processes employ at this particular uh, juncture. So asynchronous is a way that uh, sending a process offers the non-blocking tactic. As you can see, there's some kind of continuous yeah, uh, line uh, showing that the client is actually offering some kind of non-blocking. Then there's a blocking operation uh, within the process too. So we also have synchronous send and asynchronous receive where we have the blocking being issued and of course there's some kind of acknowledgement before the process one proceeds or resumes uh, sending its message through blocking procedure. And of course we say we have non-blocking from the asynchronous side where we have the process two receiving it uh, receiving the message through uh, synchronous operation so uh, we can go on and on uh, trying to understand how this synchronous and asynchronous communication happens all we need to, to know in summary is that synchronous offers an unblocking tactic where it allows the sender of the message to send a particular message by blocking right uh, its communication channel and allows the receiver to receive that particular uh, message. Uh, the other option is to offer asynchronous, right? Asynchronous blocking, or what we refer to as non blocking, where a particular process has the capability of either receiving multiple processes, I mean, multiple uh, messages, and of course, also sending multiple messages so that is all uh, about synchronous and asynchronous communication within distributed uh, system so kindly check on our previous uh, tutorials about communication or interprocess communication in distributed system i've already shared the link you can go through it i've covered a wide variety of topics right from understanding how interprocess works we have also looked at how to employ the various uh, tactics such as remote method invocation and remote procedural accord. So should you find this particular uh, tutorial interesting or useful, always feel free to subscribe and share the channel with the rest of your uh, friends. All right, uh, thanks.